Let's take a look at how to use the timing screen for iRacing with iRacing Live Timing from SDK Gaming. You can see I'm on the homepage here, sdk-gaming.co.uk. And to download the software, we'll need to go to Shop. And then we can see that I've got a few different license options available. I'm going to try out the 14-day free trial. And then once I've scrolled through the information about the software, I see that I'm going to be asked for my iRacing customer ID. So the iRacing live timing software is going to be linked to your iRacing account. So we need to ensure that that's correct. To find that, you go to the iRacing member site, account, and then my account. And then we can see in the top right hand corner here, here's our customer ID. So we'll copy that. And whilst I'm on the my account page, if I scroll down to the bottom, we can see that I've got an option for connection type. I need to ensure that this is going to be set to the one megabit or second or faster option to make sure that the data being sent from iRacing to the timing software isn't throttled at all. So make sure I save that change. And then back on the SDK Gaming website, I'll paste in now my customer ID that I found. I'll choose how I'd like to be contacted in the future and then I'll add that product to the basket. And then once we've gone through checkout, you will have an account created on the website and you'll receive a confirmation email with then the download links included. You can also find the download links on the website as well. So if we go into the burger menu, click on my account and about halfway down we can see we have downloads and then here are my download links from a product I previously ordered. So for iRacing Live Timing, I'll use this first link here, iRacing Live Timing and Live Streamer latest release. So when I click on that, I can see I've got the zip file downloading. And then I'll need to extract it first of all. Choose where I'd like the folder to go. And then here's our extracted folder. So to run the iRacing Live Timing software, it'll be this exe file here, iRacingLifetiming.exe. So double click on that. Windows then is going to warn us that it's not recognized. So to run it, we need to click more info and then run anyway. And then your firewall may also say that it's not recognized either. So you will need to allow access for that. And then we can see that our timing software then is up and running. I've already got iRacing running as well, which is why the data is being updated. And we need to just check a setting on iRacing as well. So if we go into options and then graphics, I need to ensure that max cars is set to 63. So again, it's to ensure that the data isn't being throttled from iRacing. If it's set to lower than that, then those cars will be just completely missing from the timing information um, itself. And so, yeah, so here's our timing screen. And as I said, it's a full screen of information. I can click between different drivers to see the race from their vantage point. You can see that the references are changing at the minute based on the driver I've selected. But I can make adjustments to that. So if I press F3 or we'll go into the burger menu here at the top, that opens up our settings panel. And I've got a couple of different options at the top here. I can change the size of the text. So if I put that to 50, then that's how that would look. I like it on 80 for my 1920 by 1080 screen. I've got this next option, which is reference driver. So I can either have the driver selectable in live timing like I've done there. And then those references taken from that driver I've chosen. Or I can keep it based on the driver that is selected in iRacing. So that means that if you are using this as a second or fourth screen maybe when you're driving you want to ensure that, that is set on driver selected in iRacing and then you know that the data is always being taken from your vantage point but maybe you're as a spotter for another driver so if you select the driver selected in live timing it means you can jump around and look at different people's races and see their gaps in relation to everyone else and see how they're getting on uh, i can also choose to view my uh, expected pit out position as well so if i click on show scroll down a little way we can see that i have a pit out position shown in here so that's a, an estimate as to where you'd come kind of where you're going to come out but you need to enter that value yourself in advance so you need to figure out how long it's going to take you to complete a pit stop and come back out on track and then you can enter that information in the fields here uh, at the bottom so for instance because i'm selected on a different driver if I say that I'm expecting it to take in 40 seconds total lost, then we can see that that pit out position has changed as a result. I can also choose to show or hide whichever of these data columns that I would like. So you can just do that simply through the options here. 
So maybe I want to get rid of the I rating license information. Click on hide. I get rid of the I rating gain as well. Click on hide. Maybe I don't care about what their best laps are. I just want to see what their last laps are. So we'll click on hide on there. So that view is going to be fully customizable and allow you to get the information that you want to see. So there we have it. You've now got a fully functioning timing screen, color coordinated, fully customizable, and for sure going to give you an advantage out on track.